Sa isang sulok ng hulo, nakilala ko si Sister Mercedita. Dating Carmelite man, pero ngayon, balik islam na. Sa bahay na ito siya nakatira, kasama ang mga kaibigang Muslim. Sa akin yung peace of mind at saka talagang sabi nga nila, it's a vocation also kasi to be a sister is really a call, no? God's call. Pero I have a, for my inner disposition, I have another call. But more, talagang mas ano, mas uh, mga bata, ano, mas malalim. Yun ang nakita ko sa Islam. Wala naman may gusto, kahit mga madre walang gusto, kahit ako hindi ko walang gusto. Sa akin ko, anong gusto niya, yun ang gusto ko. Ay, yun ang Islam, submission to God's will. But God's wants for me, it's also my decision. Dalawamputlimang taon siya sa monasteryo, na-assign siya sa misyon noong 1978. Pinadala pa raw siya sa Roma para mag-aral. Nagpaikot-ikot rin siya sa iba't ibang bansa para mag-misyon. At noong 1985, sa hulo siya pinag-misyon. Nakasama pa niya sa hulo ang madring Espanyol na si Sister Julia na kinidnap ng Abu Sayyaf taong 1993. Nang pakawalan si Sister Julia, bumalik na raw ito ng Espanya. Pero kahit itong sinapit ng madring nakasama niya sa misyon, hindi siya natakot bumalik ng Mindanao. Ayaw niyang husgahan ang mga bandidong Muslim kahit masakit na nailahanay ang balik Islam sa mga terorista. Masakit sa amin kasi hindi naman talaga ano, hindi totoo. Kung totoo siya ng Islam, peace and really, yung sinasabi na peace lang ng people. Nang magmisyon siya dito sa hulo, nainganyo siyang magbasa ng Quran. Dito daw niya natagpuan ang tunay na misyon niya sa buhay. Wala naman ang nasabi yung pinakamagandang nangyari sa buhay niya. Yung pinakamagandang, nag-Muslim din ako. Kasi tinawag balik ako ng Diyos. Pero for how many years? 39? I was 39 that time. From 0 to 39. Ano ako? Christian. Magpo-forty ako nung nag-Muslim. Sa Islam nakita ko na yung oneness of God, yung sinasabi nilang purity of faith. Sa simula, hindi matanggap ng Carmelite sisters ang naging desisyon niya. Pinasaykayatwist pa daw siya. Before, yung sinabi nila sa akin na ako ay, para bang nalulo ka? Crazy. Kasi hindi sila makapaniwala na ako bakit ako nag-Islam. Imadre ako. Mas nang ibabaw ang pagmamahal niya kay Ala. Kaya noong 1988, tinalikuran niya ang monasteryo at dito na tumira sa hulo. Nagpaalam po kayo. Mm -hmm. Tapos nung pinababalik ako, so I, I go back, I went back to the convent to kinuha yung aking mga papeles, mga passport. Kasi lagi nila akong pinapabrood. Nasa yung sa mission. Kasi sabi nila, I am really destined for the mission. Ngayon, nagtuturo na si sister sa high school ng Arabic language at values formation. Mas mahirap daw ang buhay niya ngayon, katatapos lang ng operasyon niya sa gallbladder. Wala siyang sweldo, wala rin kongregasyon na pwedeng sandalan kapag may sakit. Pero ito na raw ang bago niyang buhay, ang bagong pananampalataya. Ito rin ang kagustuhan ni Ala. Kaya na three weeks pa yung hatis balik Islam, pero converted to Islam yung... Kasi dito ko na din narinig yung balik Islam. Pero sa akin, yung pagpabalik na ibo sa Diyos, na doon mo nakita yung sinasabi ng kapayapaan, yung peace of mind, yung inner, inner peace.
my, my older view that the Bible is the inspired uh, word of God with no errors in it uh, came under fire for, uh, for, for just this reason. We don't, have, we don't have the originals of any of the copies of the New Testament or, or the Hebrew Bible uh, either. Uh, what we have are copies that were made centuries later in most cases by scribes, some of whom weren't very good. And these copies that we have all have changes in them. Uh, this is this is what my earlier book on misquoting Jesus was about, is that we have thousands of copies, and these thousands of copies have hundreds of thousands of differences in them. And I got to a point where it no longer made sense for me to say that God had inspired the words of this text, because we don't have the words of this text. Mm -hmm. And so what, what would be the point of even saying God had inspired them? We don't have them. And so this was another, another sort of moment for me when I realized that, in fact, this older belief of mine uh, simply wasn't credible. And I started realizing that, in fact, there are a lot of mistakes in the Bible. Uh, contradictions, discrepancies, different points of view. Different authors have different things that they have to say about fundamental issues, about who Jesus is, who God is, what salvation is. And so that the Bible is not a unified monolith. In fact, it's a book that has lots of different, rep uh, lots of different points of view represented in it. Let me talk about the surviving copies that we do have. Uh, first, give you a sense of the numbers uh, of books that we're talking about. New Testament was originally written in Greek, and at last count, we had over 5,700 copies of the New Testament uh, in the Greek language in which it was originally written. These, uh, these copies uh, can be compared with one another, and when you compare these copies with one another, there are lots of mistakes in them because no two of these copies are exactly alike in their wording. Thing. Many of these differences in the manuscripts are so unimportant that you can't replicate them in translation. Okay? In other words, you, like they changed the word order uh, in Greek, where you would have to translate the same way no matter what the Greek word order is. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter very much. By far, the vast majority of these hundreds of thousands of differences are significant for nothing more than showing that scribes in antiquity could spell no better than my students can today. And scribes, of course, didn't have spell check. <laughs> uh, scribes, in fact, didn't even have dictionaries. And scri many scribes didn't care how they spelled anything. Sometimes you'll be reading a manuscript, and there'll be the same word that occurs, say, three times within a couple of lines, and the scribe will spell the same word three different ways. He just doesn't care how the word is spelled. Well, so, you know, you've got, you've got lots and lots of those kinds of changes. And what do they matter for? They don't matter at all. So having said there are all these hundreds of thousands of differences, I want to stress that most of them don't matter for very much. Some of these, some of these changes, the ones that don't matter, basically, are accidental mistakes. Scribes were uh, sometimes tired or sleepy. Uh, sometimes they were distracted. Sometimes they were inept or unqualified. And they made mistakes. They would leave out a word. They'd leave out a, a verse. Sometimes they'd leave out a page. Uh, they, they just made mistakes sometimes. Mistakes where scribes just slip up. And intentional mistakes where it looks like scribes are actually trying to change the text. Now, I don't know for sure that scribes are trying to change the text. I don't have any scribes around to interrogate about the matter. But there are some changes that don't look like they could possibly simply be a slip of the pen. And there are others that are debatable, whether they're a slip of the pen or, or not. But let me give you a couple of examples, and you'll see that some of these look like scribes maybe wanted to change the text. I'll give you a, I'll give you a couple for instances. In Mark chapter 1, the Gospel of Mark, uh, we read at the very beginning that uh, we read, as was written in Isaiah the prophet, behold, I send my messenger before your face to prepare your way for you. Okay, this is in Isaiah the prophet, behold, I send my messenger before you. This is a very interesting passage because the passage that's quoted is not Isaiah. It says in Isaiah the prophet, and then it gives the quotation. The passage quoted is actually Exodus. So it's interesting that in uh, the later manuscripts of uh, Mark's Gospel, the text is changed. Not to, so that it no longer says, in Isaiah, as is written in Isaiah the prophet. Now it says, as is written in the prophets. Which we actually... ...do, it's interesting because you see this confusion here. Like I said, we are not trying to step on nobody's toes, but this information is out there, and, and it should be known. Now, what we have in the verbatim Word of God, the Quran, 
which is kept intact since it was revealed, memorized by millions all over the world. You have a verse in there that God Almighty, Allah, is saying that woe to those that write the book with their hands yes. and gain a mis yes. miserly price. Woe yes. to them for what their hands do write. Yeah, we, we certainly do. And, and we can see this uh, specifically in terms of some places in the Bible where we know when something was added, we know why it was added, we even know where it was added. Give us some examples now. Yeah, if I can reach over here to uh, King James Version of the Bible. Yes. And I'm, I'm using this one because the King James Version is from a, a late Greek source manuscript, uh, not an early one. And this is what you'll find in the King James Version. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. Now that's what you find. And that's what this is that? This is uh, 1 John chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. Yeah. And that certainly sounds like the Trinity, doesn't it? Yes. Okay, but this is a late Greek manuscript that they're translating from. Now, if we go to the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, which goes back to much earlier manuscripts, and we look at the same exact verse, we find this. There are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. And that's it. Everything about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and being in heaven, and these three are one, that's a later edition that does not exist in the oldest manuscripts. And in this particular case, we know when this was added. It was added around the year 380. It was added in Spain, in a manuscript in Spain, and from there went into the Latin Vulgate, Jerome's translation of the Bible into Latin, and then subsequently was picked up from Latin sources and some late Greek manuscripts, mm -hmm. which is how it got into the King James Version. But the original, there's absolutely no mention of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What's the one from, I believe it's Mark, towards the end, where you have a bits, whole chunks that oh, are it's, not... It's the last part of Mark. Most of the early manuscripts end with verse 8. This is chapter 16, verse 8. That's where it ends. But in later manuscripts, it goes on from, chapter, from verse 9 to uh, verse 20, talking about the resurrection of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a big later addition uh, to the... Uh, These are known Bible. facts. How about the story of the adulterer and the adulteress? Oh, and John. Yeah. doesn't exist in the earliest manuscripts. The one where Jesus says, how does it go? He said, those... Uh, those uh, without sin cast the first stone. Yeah. Wonderful story. Beautiful story. The entire chapter is a later edition. doesn't exist in the earliest manuscripts that we have. I mean, this is uh, something profound. I mean, it's amazing. Any sincere person, what should he do now? What does he do? He's confused. You've confused some people. Some people knew it from the, from the get-go. I mean, where do we go from here now? Well, a person needs to study. Uh -huh. And this is what I would advise any Christian to do. Study your Bible and study a good translation of the Bible. And the one I would recommend is the New Revised Standard Version because it does go back to some of the earliest manuscripts that we have. Um, and then get a good Bible commentary, one that's done by scholars, such as the Interpreter's One Volume Commentary on the Bible published around 1974, I think it was, or 1971. Study these. Uh, there's no substitute for study. Become familiar with your own scripture. Uh, and as many converts to Islam have discovered, by studying the Bible, this was actually one of the things that led them to Islam. 